Welcome everybody. In this class, we will start off with this topic called as propositional logic. Now, foremost, before you could start learning about this particular concept, propositional logic, it becomes imperative to understand why you need to study this if you are into computer science, software engineering and the courses related with AI, machine learning and etc. Why it is imperative that you need to know this. Now, before I could give you the understanding as to why, the reason I'm giving is, as the great Sun Tzu said, it is important for a soldier to know the reason for the battle, then he fights well. So if you know why you are or why you are required to study this, then you will put your 100 percentage of effort into this particular topic. So that's the reason I'm taking time to explain to you why you need this all important topic called propositional logic. So having mentioned that, let me give you the introduction and then connect that introduction to propositional logic. Now foremost, if you are into computer science, now when I mean computer science, it also includes software engineering and other related fields to computer sciences. And computer science can be divided into three major sections or branches. The, the first one comes what is called as computer engineering. The second one is called as theoretical computer sciences. So let me write that down. T stands for theoretical. This is going to be computer science. And the third branch is what is called as application computing. Now, whatever we are going to be doing in propositional logic will come into application computing. Now, what is this area? Application computing is an important specialization which are applied to the creation of robotics, Boolean satisfactability, optimization problems and knowledge representation. Now this is the key element, knowledge representation that I would be using as an illustration. So having given you this information, let me just highlight this particular word knowledge representation. Now if you are designing a mission, you need to be first focus on how are you going to represent knowledge to the mission? How are you going to be representing knowledge to the mission? Why is it important? You might be asking me, why should I represent knowledge to the mission? But the all important fact is everything that we have done, all that we have done in the past or will be doing now or anything else in the future. So past, present and future, all that is connected with our action is knowledge driven. In other words, say for example, you are studying your higher secondary. Let me just consider this illustration. You are basically studying higher secondary. Now why are you studying higher secondary? Because you want to be independent in life. And that is the reason you have joined a school in the first place. Now, higher secondary alone is not going to be sufficient for you to earn a living, a respectable living. So, 
when you are in the higher secondary, you wanted to know which course you can join in a university. It doesn't matter which university. In fact, no matter which university you join, all that matters is what course you study, course you study, and how you study, and how much effort you put in, what level of energy that goes into the course through you and subsequently how well you graduate. All these things are important. Now you might be wondering is scores are predictive of my success level. Of course you need to get high scores. The very fact that you have got A means that you are put in the effort. So that is the correlation. Of course some of uh, the people might argue just because a person has got A doesn't mean the person has got the expertise. Well, we can go on arguing like that, but grades are the direct correlation of the level of energy that the individual has put into the course. Okay, now let me come back to this part, all important point. Now what you will do is you will be starting to ask questions to people whom you know. Sir, which course I can join? Madam, which course can I join? Is it, is this course which I would be doing because you are going to be investing four years of your time in pursuing this course or it might be three years or it might be five years. We don't know. So your time is priceless. I, I can't even say precious. It is priceless. Nothing can be used to purchase that four years. So that four years of your life is spent in a university so that you can live the rest of your life with comfort and with uh, a degree of satisfaction and independence. So these are the returns of this course. So these are the returns that you will have to focus on. So what are you doing here? You are actually asking questions. Whenever you ask questions, knowledge is connected. So this is in your past. Now in your present, what you are going to be asking? You are going to be asking about the companies that you would like to join. The companies. Or still further, in the future, you might be asking what investments can I do that would secure my future? So all of these questions are knowledge driven and these questions require answers. Now we cannot be going on to consultants to ask these questions. Of course, they are the source of uh, expertise. Apparently, it will involve a lot of uh, time and money and both these commodities are not cheap. Time and money are like very expensive commodities and every time you walk into the consultant, you cannot be shelling out huge uh, sums and uh, you, you get what I mean. So what is the alternative? The alternative is go to a machine. So when I say machine, people in the field of computer science engineering, they will refer it as bots. So when you open an inter uh, internet, you can communicate with a machine. Now the question is, how clever is the machine? The cleverness of this machine will depend on its ability to make decisions. Simple. How is it possible for a machine to make decision? For example, you are asking a question. Say, how much money should I invest to be comfortable? Something like that. There is another thing what is called as how exactly you utilize syntax and semantics in framing the question. So that is also important whenever you frame a question so that the machine can understand. So you're asking this question, is Amazon a good company? Something like that you're asking so that you want to join that company. So there should be an answer. The answer would either be yes or no. But when we are utilizing propositions, we are actually using T or in other words, true or false. So over here, I have asked a question, is Amazon a good company? But when I'm interacting it, with the machine, I cannot ask 
the question in this fashion. So I need to put the question in certain manner that the machine is able to understand. So that is where the concept of propositional logic comes into play. So how will I rephrase this entire question? Is Amazon a good company? I will rephrase it like this. If Amazon delivers quality products then Amazon is a good company. You see that? So this as two sentences, in fact, this question, this particular statement can be divided into two other statements. So having mentioned or used the word of statement, clearly you can now get a feel of it. So what exactly is a proposition? If someone were to ask you, what is a proposition? So how would you define this? This is the best way. A uh, proposition is, uh, it can either be a collection of declarative statements or it can be a declarative statement. So I'm just writing it as a proposition is a collection of declarative statements that has a truth value, truth value which is either true or false. So either it's true or false. There is no possibility of maybe or uh, there is even no possibility of half truth, half true and half false. Machine cannot understand because we are not dealing with uh, flesh and blood. Machine is not a boat, a uh, bot is not flesh and blood. It's not, uh, it's not a man or a woman. That is, that's not going to happen. So you will have to be giving declarative statements that has a truth value. Now, when I mean truth value, the outcome true is also considered a truth value as well as the outcome false. Whenever you have an outcome that is associated or that is what is called as a truth value. So have that in the corner of your mind. So the outcome, we are interested in the outcome. Is it true or is it false? So to get that outcome, what are we going to do? That's another important question. Okay, I've got a true and a false. What am I going to do? How am I going to transfer it to the machine? Now, you will have to understand this all important concept. From logic, whatever outcome that we get in a logic, it can be converted into Boolean equivalent. Now, what do you mean by Boolean equivalent? Zeros and ones. And what is this zeros and ones? This is the language that computers, when I say computers, it, it means machines, computers understand. So that is exactly what we are learning in this particular course, specifically in this particular topic. How? Now you may be interested to know who is the father of this particular subject. The father is Aristotle. Of course, you might, you may be wondering what? Is this guy uh, the father of logic? Yes, the Greek philosopher is the pioneer in logical reasoning. And without this logical reasoning, there is no field of computer sciences. So that is uh, a very important understanding you need to know because you are developing machines. Now, having mentioned that, let me give you a few illustrations of propositional logic. So you need to understand these illustrations. So examples. One plus one is equal to two. Is it true? Ask this question to yourself. Is this true or false? This is true. 
0 multiplied with 21 is equal to 0. Is it true? Yes, it is true. 21 minus 21 is equal to 1. Is this true or false? Now, when I say is it true, when you pose a question, there is also the element of false present in there. So, I have that understanding also. So, in this case, let me be more elaborate. 21 minus 21 is equal to 1. Is this true or false? Definitely, this is false. So, I'm giving you these uh, mathematical uh, illustrations and that would help you to better understand because these are all elementary level, uh, beginners level uh, illustrations before we could move on to advanced levels. So, clearly you can see that this has got just one answer. Either it can be true or it can be false. So, that is the important point you will have to understand. Say, imagine I'm giving you this statement. X is less than 21. Is it true or false? Can you take a guess? You, can, you cannot say it's true or false because you have no information on X. So, whenever we are asking a question, as I mentioned to you, to a machine, we need to know how to paraphrase the question. In other words, how exactly we can interact in the language that the machine understands. So, that is also important part that we will have to take into consideration. Now, the next important concept you will have to know is what is called as connectives. Now, when we are studying propositional logic, as I mentioned to you just in a previous illustration, if Amazon delivers quality products, then Amazon is a good company. So, there are two statements present here. And then there is this all-important if. Now, this if is the condition that is posted or applied on to this first statement. So, like that, we have many different connectives that we will add to understand. The first connectives that we will have to know is what is called as the OR. This is the very important connective OR. And how do we represent this? We represent this by means of this, this symbol. This is how we represent. Now, the next connective is AND. And how do we represent this? We represent it like this. And then comes negation. Now, some textbooks use the tilde and some textbooks use this symbol for negation. They will either place it like this or they will also revert it to face the other direction. And then comes the implication. This is also a very important symbol. This is also called as if. If this is true, then. So, it's a if-then condition. So, in the previous illustration, I have utilized if this company delivers quality products, then this company is a good company. So, there is a if condition required for the element or for the statement to be satisfied. If it satisfies, then the consequences follow. And that is represented by means of this arrow. And then finally, you have what is called as uh, if and only if. If and only if. Let me write that down. Types of proposition. There are two types. The first type is called as simple proposition. That means it will have it as one subject and one predicate. So, let us see an example for simple proposition. So, the other way to represent simple proposition is that they are declarative statements. So, what do you mean by declarative statements? It means they will not have any connectives. Best example, David is a 
shepherd rose is red aqua is a good group chess is a good sport a good game or you can use whatever you want so these are all some of the declarative statements now the moment you place a connective for example let me just state this Tom went to the store and he bought a cake Tom went to the store and there is a connective here this is not a simple proposition okay now let me give another illustration and i want you all to find out if this is a simple proposition or not ice creams so let me just state it as ice cream ice cream tastes good even in the coldest day of a long arduous snowy winter night is it simple or not the answer is yes you would guess you have made the right decision it is simple so this is simple and this is not a simple proposition so i have given you the simple proposition it is important that you know simple proposition is also called as atomic proposition so let's go on to the next one i have given you simple proposition now there is the next type it's called as complex proposition now what is this complex proposition this as many declarative statements you can either use declarative statements or it has many simple propositions combined together using connectives so that is how a complex proposition is created now complex proposition are also called as another word is compound proposition now we will see some illustrations so let me give you an example hector is strong and helen loves him number 2 terence and francesca love to eat steak example 2 so you got the connectivity here eta is strong and helen loves him there is a connectivity here so you will have to look for connectivity number 3 
triangle is equilateral if and only if its sides are all equal so you have a connectivity here so I've given three illustrations for complex proposition so now it's time for us to get to do questions related to the connectivities so that we'll get a better understanding so I'm going to start off with giving examples for conjunction and we represent conjunction as the symbol it is also referred to as the AND connectivity so let us give a small illustration say George Foreman is a strong boxer and 2 plus 2 equals 4. Now there is a conjunction here. So this is an illustration for this conjunction and George Foreman is a strong boxer and 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. So you got a component as P. So let me take P to be as George Foreman. is a strong boxer and let me take Q to be as 2 positive 2 is equal to 4 now if I were to construct a truth table say P and Q in this fashion and I would like to know what happens when P and Q are taken together? Now, George Foreman is a strong boxer. Is it true or false? Of course it is true. 2 plus 2, is it equal to 4? It's given. Is it true or false? Of course it is true. So, true and true will give us true. So that is the first illustration I wish to provide you here. Now let me go on and give you another illustration. Delhi is in India and 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. Uh, atomic proposition with another atomic proposition. So, if I were to take this entire thing as P and this entire thing as Q, what do you think will the outcome be? So, let me write that table down. P and Q, P and Q. So, when I said P and Q, I'm not actually meaning the conjunction here, right? So, just utilizing the language of English. So Delhi is in India, that is true. And 2 plus 2, okay. So what I would do is, instead of saying 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, I would change this to 2 plus 2 is equal to 51. Because it's again going to be true and true. 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. So I'm just changing it to 51. So Delhi is in India, that's fine. That is a truth proposition. Outcome is true. And 2 plus 2 is equal to 51. Is it true or false? That's going to be false. So when you add true and false, what do you get? When you add a true statement with a false statement, what do you get? You get false. Now I'm going to tell you a trick how exactly to get the result in the following illustration. So I've given this and this so let me take one more illustration, one more illustration. I don't want to flip the page. I will give the illustration over here. 
So Bombay, you can give any city you want. Bombay is in Russia. And crows are white. Bombay is in Russia and crows, this is a type of bird, are white. Have you seen a crow which is white? No. So let me write that P and Q and over here P and Q. So Bombay is in Russia. No, Bombay is not in Russia. That's false. And crows are white. No, you can never see a crow which is white in color. That's false. So false and false will give you a false. So I have given you the language equivalent and the logical table. Now what I wish to do now is to design a full-fledged table and I will give you a trick how you can apply it to get the decisions here. Now let me draw the table. It's always better to draw the this is called as a truth table. And try to use a ruler whenever you're drawing the truth table. So you will have one one, two, three, and one, two, three, and four. Okay, so let me space them out a little bit for better clarity. One, two, Okay, so this is P and Q. So this is P, this is Q, this is P and Q. I start with true, true, false, false. This is going to be true false, true and false. Now, whenever you are asked to perform P and Q, take the value of T to be as 1 and take the value of F to be as 0 and take the conjunction, the AND operator. So, let me reiterate. Take the value of T to be as 1 take the value of f to be as 0 and the conjunction operator which you see here, a wedge, take this as the product. So visualize 1 multiplied with 1, what do you get? You will get 1, that's going to be t. Now 1 multiplied with 0, what do you get? You get 0, that's false. 0 multiplied with 1, what do you get? You get false. 0 multiplied with 0, you get 0. So that's false. So this is the trick you can apply. So don't worry about this. You follow me? So remember, take the conjunction operator as product. And once you take this, everything will be simple. Now the next we will be learning is what is called as this junction. So when exactly this is created? Two propositions, two or more propositions it can be. Two propositions can be combined to form a compound proposition, a compound or complex proposition using the R operator or you can use the word connected. Now the 
symbol that we use for representing the OR operator or OR connective is this B. This is how we represent. So let me give some sentential examples. Nice is in France uh, or 2 positive 3 is equal to 5. So this is true or this is true. The outcome will be true. Nice is in France or 2 positive 7 is equal to 5. This is true or this is true. The outcome will be true. Nice is in Russia or 2 plus 7 is equal to 8. 2 plus 7 is equal to 9. So this is true or this is true. Now this we know this is false. So even though you got the first one to be false and the second one is true. In this case the first one is true and the second one is false. Outcome is true. In this case also the outcome will be true. And followed by the last example, Nice is in Russia or 2 plus 7 is equal to 91. Now clearly you can see that this is false. This is also false. When false or false, the outcome is going to be false. Now the question is how are we going to represent this by means of a table. So let me just draw the table there. Okay, so this is P, Q, P or Q. So I'm taking it as true, true, false, false, true, false, true and false. So the trick to understand here is whenever you see this OR operator, you treat it as addition symbol. And as I mentioned to you earlier, you take T to be as 1 and F to be as 0. Now what happens when you add 1 with 1? Of course, you're going to get 2, but in our representation, it's going to be true. And in this case, 1 added with 0, what do you get? You get 1. So that's going to be true. 0 added with 1, what are you going to get? That's going to be 1. True. Now 0 added with 0, what are you going to be getting? you're going to be getting zero. So that's going to be false. So this is how you can easily complete the truth table. So I haven't given you these two illustrations. We'll move on to the next one. Now the next important concept you need to know is negation. Let me explain to you negation in this fashion. If P is the given proposition that has a truth value as t, then the negation of p represented as you can either represent it like this or the abbreviation that your textbook uses. 
So generally, this symbol is called tilde. Represented as tilde p will be the truth value that is opposite to the truth value of p. So in this case, if I were to take p to be as true, that's what I've taken here, then negation of p is going to be opposite of this value. That's going to be false. So that is the concept connecting negation. Now the next concept is what is called as tautologies. And you will have to also understand contradictions. So when exactly you call a proposition to be a tautology? Now this is the simplest way to understand tautology. A proposition is a tautology if it produces only true. Now in coming to table form, suppose you want to understand it in the tabular form which we have been used to, then in that case I can reword it in this following fashion. Alternatively, if the proposition produces only the truth value T in the last column. So this is the important trait that we will look for in the last column of the truth table. Then the proposition is called or defined a tautology. Co on the other hand, or contrary to this, on the other hand, if the proposition produces only f, the truth value f, the proposition is said to be a contradiction. So that is the definition for tautologies and contradictions. So let's see some examples. So now I'll be showing you a classic example or tautology. So let me write that. Show that the following proposition is a tautology, is a So this is what we have been given P V uh, I'm calling it V because it's looking like V it's uh, the disjunction operator negation of Q and then you got the conjunction of negation of P disjunction negation of Q this entire thing is having a disjunction with Q. Now, 
we can represent the truth table it's a uh, it's going to be a, a huge one so let me draw that first so let me have the following p and it's given as capital q it doesn't matter so q and then you have to get negation of p negation of q and then this part p disjunction negation of q and then this part negation of p disjunction negation of q and then you will have to perform this entire thing p v negation of q conjunction and followed by negation of p v negation of q so this is one part and as i mentioned to you we will also have to perform this versus this so the table is too small i will just make sure that you complete the table the table have to be completed completion means you will have to complete it with the line straight line I need to have one more with reference to this having a disjunction with the Q. So what I will do is I will try to squeeze it somewhere over here. Okay, foremost, let me write down the truth values. 3, T, F, and F. So whenever they are asking you to perform a tautology and they are giving you a proposition in this fashion, you will have to take in the truth values. The general way is shown as follows. So T, T, F, F, and then T, F, and then T, and then F. Right? So, negation of P, as I mentioned to you, whatever value that you get, you take the opposite of that. So that's going to be F. This is going to be F and a T and a T. Negation of Q, opposite of this is going to be F, T, F, and T. And next is, we need to perform P, a disjunction, with negation of Q. P, a disjunction with a negation of Q. So as I mentioned to you, disjunction means you are actually adding, right? So T is taken to be as 1 and F is taken to be as 0. And this is taken to be as addition operator. So 1 added with 0 would give you 1. 1 added with 1 will give you one and I mean one we are getting T. Zero added with zero will give you zero. Zero added with one will give you one. 
Next is negation of P with disjunction being performed with negation of Q. So this with this, as I mentioned to you, we are actually adding to get the easiest output. So zero with zero, that's going to be zero. Zero with one, that's going to be one. One with zero, that's going to be one. One with one, that's going to be one. Now we have to perform a disjunction between this and this. Ah, it's not disjunction, it's conjunction. So we have to perform conjunction, that's going to be product operation. Right, so this is a conjunction. So taking the value for t is one and f is zero. So one multiplied with zero will give us zero. One multiplied with one is one. Zero multiplied with one will give you zero. One multiplied with one will give you one. So this is what we have got. Now what we will now do is we will have to perform with disjunction with Q. So this entire thing is actually performing a disjunction with Q. So what I will do is I will I will squeeze the values over here. So this is the output that we will get to place here. So we got this and we are performing a disjunction. As I told you, disjunction is addition. So this versus Q. Q is over here. So one added with zero will give us one. One added with zero will give us one. One added with zero will give us one. Zero added with one will give us one. You see that? This is what we are looking for. So we have proved this, that this is a tautology. So you can state it from the truth table. We observe that P disjunction negation of Q conjunction negation of P disjunction negation of Q with disjunction of Q is indeed a tautology. Hence the proof or you can say hence the result, whatever you want. So that is a beautiful pastor. We will move on to the next one. Now the question comes is, how do we handle when we have been given P, Q and R? So we got a proposition here, a proposition here and a proposition here. And how are we going to assign the truth values? We have an example here. The question is, prove that P disjunction negation of Q conjunction R and P disjunction negation of Q conjunction negation of R are equivalent. We need to prove this. So to start off, what we need to do is we need to assign the values, the truth values for PQR. So that is the single most important action in this question. So let me draw the truth table P, Q, R. I'm going to evaluate this first. So you got Q conjunction R and then you need to perform the negation of Q conjunction R and then you'll have to perform P 
disjunction negation of q conjunction r i was thinking of uh, representing both these sides on a single end well i can still do it what i will do is i will just i got an idea so i will still be able to complete the question in this to the table i'm hoping for so this is covered now this is going to be p disjunction negation of q and then finally this with disjunction of negation of r so probably i could have given negation of r over here so let me place negation of r there i will divide the and over here this is going to be p disjunction negation of q disjunction negation of r okay that's fine so now we need to place in the truth values as i mentioned to you take time to represent the truth values by means of a well drawn table make sure to complete this edge that's important you can't leave the table open so we need to show this and this are one and the same right so now comes assigning the values so we need to look for 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 okay so we start with the following values so let me place them in a different order this takes t t t and the next one would be change this to f t t f now change this to f so t f t now change this to f f t t now change this back to t and change these two to f f f now change this back to f or change this to f and change this to t and retain this as f now change this to f f and change this back to t and change this or retain this as f and then finally you have f f and f now this needs some practice and only through practice you'll be able to fill in these three rows over up until here is fine right so t f t and then this f is being changed or moved over here f t t and now we are actually changing these two to f f and we are having this as t and then we are changing this to t and this to f but this is retained as it is so from over here all you can have this idea so 
these two were FF. Now the extremes are changed to FF and this is retained as or changed to T. So the only one element that remains the same is this F. And then we change this to F, this is retained and this to T. And finally you got F, F, F. So I suggest you practice writing the truth values. So these are the possible combinations. So let's take the negation of R. Negation of R is whatever that you got here, you have to revert it or reverse it. That's a better word. So T means this is F, T, F, F, T, T, F, and T. This is performing a, a conjunction between Q and R. As I mentioned to you, this means treated as a multiplication. And T takes the value as 1 and F takes the value as 0. So you got a conjunction between Q and R. So 1 into 1, you get 1. 1 into 0, you get 0. 0 into 1, 0. 1 into 1, 1, 0 into 0, 0, 1 into 0, 0, 0 into 1, 0, 0 times 0, 0. Now, we need to take the negation of Q conjunction R. So, this is going to be false, true, true, false, true, 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 true. Now we need to perform a disjunction of P versus this. So when I talk about disjunction, this is nothing but the add operator. So this versus this. So 1 added with 0, I get 1. 1 added with 1, I get 1. 1 added with 1, I get 1. one uh, 0 added with 0, I get 0. 1 added with 1, I get 1. 0 added with 1. I get 1, 0 added with 1, I get 1, 0 added with 1, I get 1. Now I need to perform a disjunction of P versus negation of Q. I could have extracted the value negation of Q. Now what I wish to do is I will, since I've got a huge space here, I will just divide this portion just to give you a better understanding. So this is going to be the negation of Q. This is going to be F. Let me write it down like this. This is F or probably I'll use a different color. This is F. This is F. This is T. So negation of T, that's going to be F. This is going to be T, this is going to be F, this is going to be T, and this is going to be T. Because we are getting the negation of Q. Now coming to P distinction negation of Q. P is performing a distinction with the negation of Q. So as I mentioned to you, distinction means you are performing an addition and T is 1, F is 0. So T, let me show you like this, T 1 added with 0 is going to be 1, 1 added with 0 is going to be 1, 1 added with 1 is going to be 1, 0 added with 0 is going to be 0. 1 added with 1 is going to be 1. 0 added with 0 is going to be 0. 0 added with 1 is going to be 1. 0 added with 1 is going to be 1. Now coming to P, disjunction, negation of Q, disjunction, negation of R. So this is performing a disjunction with negation of R. So this and this. 
so we are performing this operator this is the connectivity so 0 added with 1 will give you 1 1 added with 1 1 0 added with 1 1 0 added with 0 0 1 added with 1 1 1 added with 0 1 0 added with 1 1 1 added with 1 1 now the question is are we getting it what we're supposed to get we have to show this is equivalent to this now check it out t t t t t t f f t t t t t t t t so clearly hence from the truth table we have established or proved that the given propositions are equivalent so that is the solution for this question now we will give an example for a proposition which is a contradiction so the question is as follows let me write that down determine whether the following proposition is a contradiction or a tautology so this is the question and the proposition given is P distinction Q conjunction P distinction negation of Q conjunction negation of P distinction Q conjunction negation of P distinction negation of Q so this is how the proposition looks it looks a little bit challenging but we can handle it so foremost let me draw the truth table giving some space it's going to be P and then Q followed by we need to calculate the negation of P negation of Q and then we need to find the conjunction uh, I would say disjunction P PVQ and then PV negation of Q and then PVQ conjunction PV negation of Q and then we need to this is going to be a long one negation of P disjunction Q this has to be obtained and then finally we got one more thing so let me try to squeeze that also first let me draw the header
So this is going to be negation of P disjunction Q conjunction of negation of P with the distinction negation of Q. So we would have to have some more space. Let us see how things are going up. Okay. Now there is one particular quantity which we have not referred or which we are not represented. Of course, we are stopping till here. Negation of P with the conjunction of Q. Now it would have been much better if we also have this representation but we have not got that representation. We are directly operating it on. So let us start off and then we will work it out in the middle. This is T, T, F, and F. This is going to be F, T, T, and F. So this is how I'm taking the truth values for P and Q. So we start off with the negation of P. So whatever that you see here, you reverse it. This is F, F, this is T, and this is T. And negation of Q, whatever you see here, you reverse it. T, F, F, and T. Now, this is going to be P distinction Q. Now, this is plus operator. We are using the plus operator. And T is taken as 1, and F is taken as 0. So disjunction 1 added with 0 gives me 1, 1 added with 1 is 1, 0 added with 1, 1, one 0 added with 0 is 0. Now we are performing this now, we have already performed this, we are performing this. This is nothing but P disjunction negation of Q, P disjunction with negation of Q. So disjunction means adding, negation of Q, we will have to club these two together or perform the operation for these two together. 1 added with 1, 1, 1 added with 0, 1, 0 added with 0, 0, 0 added with 1 is 1. That's fine. So we have performed this. Now we need to perform this and this together. So that's exactly what I have placed here. So these two are being performed now over here. So 
this is a conjunction so when we using conjunction we are going to be using the product operator so this is for your understanding so t times t so 1 with 1 1 multiplied with 1 will give you 1 1 multiplied with 1 will give you 1 1 multiplied with 0 will give you 0 0 multiplied with 1 will give you 0 that's fine so this is done now we need to perform negation of p with disjunction of q negation of p with disjunction of q so let me do that negation of p disjunction with q so when we talk about disjunction as i mentioned to you disjunction is addition so this added with this zero added with zero will give you zero one I'll start here. 0 added with 1 will give you 1. 1 added with 1 will give you 1. 1 added with 0 will give you 1. That's fine. Now, what I have done here is I have clubbed these two together and I placed it as a tabular column in, in, into the truth table. Now, I don't want to place this part over here. So, I just take this off. I will just retain the tabular column with this heading. Negation of P with disjunction with negation of q so that it will act as a better way to understand what is happening and then finally i will have to draw one more column to show the representation now for this time being i will just perform negation of p disjunction negation of q and i will write it down here that's exactly what i've placed here because i've removed the other part i've removed this part from this headache so let's perform negation of P disjunction with negation of Q. So as I mentioned to you, disjunction means addition. This is zero, this is one. Zero added with one will give me one. Zero added with zero will give me zero. One added with zero is going to give me one. 100 with 1 will give me 1. Now, what are we doing here? We are taking this, we are taking this, this is conjunction with this, and then all of these are actually having a conjunction with this. So, is it okay that I fuse or I squeeze in the values for the result here? Over here, probably I'll give a different color and then I will I'll, I'll call it as a result complete result or e s u l t it's understood right the complete result is placed here so what is the complete result this conjunction this and then there is a conjunction with this so all of these three quantities are getting conjuncted as I mentioned to you, conjunction means product. So you got a 1 into 0. The moment 1 into 0 comes, everything is going to be 0. Because this is also a conjunction. So this is going to be F0. 1 into 1, 1 into 0. That's going to be 0. 0 into 1 into 1 is going to be 0. 0 into 1 into 1 is going to be 0. So clearly you can see that. This is a contradiction. So I can state that from the truth table, you have to mention this from the truth table. We observe that the proposition is a contradiction. That's it. That's a solution for this particular question. It's a beautiful question. And having given you this question, this is the end of the first part in proposition. This is lecture two under the title Mathematics for Computer Sciences and Software Engineering. This is the first part that deals with proposition. I will come back and meet you all in the second lecture where I will be doing conditional and biconditional propositions. Along with that, I will also give illustrations and explanations on conjunction normal forms that is also comes under logic and that would complete 
our session on propositional logics. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your day.